We give you thanks for the leaders throughout our community. We give you thanks for their vision, their care. We give you thanks for the ones who keep us safe, who keep us well, and who continue to guide us. We give you thanks for those who teach. We give you thanks for those who are young and those who are old and all in between. We give you thanks for those who take pride in this community, both what it has been and what it can be. God, as we gather today, we ask that you give us focus and vision, that we can complete the tasks before us tonight, that in the beginning of this new year we can see hope for our future, that we can be innovative and creative in finding paths forward, and that we can put the needs of our community before our own agendas and needs. God, guide us tonight and always that we might follow your will, be beacons of hope, and that our community of Coffeeville might grow in strength and of knowledge of you. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Schwartz. Uh, first item is a review of the uh, previous minutes. Any uh, any additions or corrections to uh, the last meeting's minutes as you received them? Being none, they're approved as presented. Next item is a consent agenda items, which includes uh, appropriation ordinance AO-14-24 in the amount of $763,475.88. Commissioners, questions? Do you have any? No. Okay. Mr. Williams? I don't have any. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Edwards and seconded by Commissioner Martin to approve the consent agenda as presented. Commissioner Kassler. Aye. Mayor Faulkner. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Edwards. Aye. All right, just a uh, more of a comment than, uh, than a question. I did notice on there, Chris, that there was a, uh, a, a list of electronic items that were uh, purchased, that were on there from Amazon.com. And uh, just a reminder to the maximum extent possible, let's make sure we spread that around, Tiger Direct and other, other uh, online sources for, the, for some of the previous obvious reasons. <laughs> we would appreciate that. All right, next, regular agenda items, uh, public hearings, special presentations, and proclamations. There being none, uh, next item is comments from the public. Now, just a word here, <coughs> comments. The public is free to comment on items not listed on the agenda, not listed on the agenda. Public participation is welcome and encouraged for all items on the agenda as the topics are discussed. Please be mindful of others who also may wish to speak and limit your time at the podium appropriately, again, for items not listed on the agenda and as we get to those if someone wants to speak you may uh, is there anyone in the room that would like to make comment at this time mary wilson yes sir mary wilson from 207 west new <clears throat> i just wanted to remind people that the martin luther king jr celebration will be held this sunday afternoon at three o'clock at the church of god in Christ, which is located just west of Overlook on First Street. And uh, everybody is invited to that. Thank you. All right, is there anyone else? 
All right, then. We'll close that section, move on. There being no old business, we'll move on to new business. First item is discussion and action to appoint two people to the Public Library Board. Applicants are Karen, is that Bobby? Roger Gossard, Edward Haynes, Leslie Hills, and Pete Walterscheid. And applicants are welcome to uh, make comments, come to the podium and make comments at this time. So we'll just start uh, alphabetical. Karen. Um, I just would like to be on the board to help make decisions for new things that could possibly come in for the youth and as well as adults. <laughs> There's not a lot around here and <gasps> children need educational things a little more, you know, to help them have a place to study if they don't have one at home and be able to use, utilize everything in the library. All right, commissioners, any questions for? Her? All right, thank you. Uh, next, Roger Gossard. Yes, we can't call you, Your Honor. Five applicants. The last time there was an opening, no one applied. And, uh, <laughs> so that's one of the reasons I applied this time. Uh, Y'all can't mess this up. Pick, pick two, and you win. Uh, any of the, any of these folks will be fine. Uh, reading is important. Education is important. Books are the foundation of reading and education. And, and uh, I think on my application, I, they wanted to know why I wanted to be on the library board, and I just said books are good. <laughs> All right. Any questions? All right. Uh, Edward Haynes. I don't believe not, he's here. Not present. All right. Leslie Hills. Hi. Um, I'd like to be on the board because I've got some really good ideas on how the library could outreach the com or have an outreach to the community um, kids need somewhere to go they need something to do and we offer summer reading programs we could offer fall spring and winter I mean they need to do stuff I think we need to get the college students involved and reading is important if you can read you can do anything there's nothing you can accomplish if you don't if you can't read that's it Thank you. Uh, Pete Walterscheid. Walterscheid, 1203 West 4th. Mayor, commissioners. Uh, ever since my youth, uh, back in the days of Don Drenner, I suppose, I can't think of a, uh, the library was one of the safest, most welcoming, and most intriguing places here in the city of Coffeyville. And today, as an adult, I feel the same way as well. I mean, in this increasing world of privatization, I can't think of any space that can offer the resources that the Coffeyville Public Library does to the public free of charge. Uh, it's, it's a valuable commodity and I think uh, people shouldn't take it for granted. I don't have a platform or any special agenda. Uh, I just uh, would like to work with the people. I think the board does a, a current board does an excellent job and uh, I was hoping that my input might uh, uh, somehow benefit. Any questions? All right, okay, thank, thank you. you. And uh, did we get any kind of notification from uh, Mr. Haynes? I did not. I was. I did notify him as well as all the others. He was notified that mm -hmm. he needed to be here. Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> I'd be happy with any of the four of them. As far as I'm concerned, you could put the four that showed up tonight. I'd be completely happy to put their names in a hat and draw two names. <laughs> and if the rest of the commission doesn't want to do that, I would. I would just like for each of us to, to vote for two of them and keep going until we until two of the candidates get three votes and eliminate the, the low vote getter each time like we did to appoint the Blue Ribbon Committee. Are we uh, still open for nominations over to 
Yeah, if you choose to do it the, old, the, you yes. know, the way we usually do it, that's yes. fine also. Or is there anyone that would uh, like to make a specific nomination? I'd like to nominate Leslie Hills. I know that she is involved in the community, trying to do more things in the community. Her husband's involved as well. There's no secret that she is constantly trying to get involved in the community. I think she'd make a good candidate. Commissioners, I did want to say one thing. Since both of these are unexpired, one goes to April 30th, 2016, and one goes to April 30th, 2017. I'd also like to nominate Mr. Gossard. Do you have a preference on which the length of? No, I do not. Flip a coin. Whichever comes to mind. I want to say the highest vote getter gets. Yeah, I'd probably say that's right. Uh, I want to nominate uh, Karen Bobby and uh, Pete Walterscheid. I, I then we'll just need to call roll, <laughs> and and you, you will do how Don stated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since they're all four nominated. Anyone else? All right then, uh, Cindy, go ahead with your roll call. I'd like to say something. <clears throat> it's sometimes you set up here and it's really discouraging when they have board openings because we advertise for boards and we get no applicants or we get very few or the, the applicants are the, the same folks that are interested in that board they have to reapply and we have to reappoint them to a to a another term when they've already ran their term out so that gets kind of discouraging I'm encouraged this time because we have several outstandingly qualified applicants that are, are uh, wanting to get involved in the process and be involved in our community I hope that's a trend. I hope that that's uh, what's coming down the pike and uh, more people get involved and more people are willing to come forward and uh, be a part of the process and be involved in their community. Are you ready? All right, okay. go ahead, sir. Commissioner Edwards. I would love to have any of the forums serve uh, but right now I would vote for Karen and Leslie. <coughs> Commissioner Kessler. Karen and Pete. <coughs> Mayor Faulkner. Uh, Leslie Hills and Pete Walterscheid. Commissioner Martin. The Hills and Gossard. Commissioner Williams. Um, Mr. Walterscheid and Mr. Gossard. We had two that had uh, three votes, and that's Leslie Hills and Pete Walderscheid. All right, now, uh, as far as the terms. Why don't you flip a coin? Maybe. What is the uh, proper way to do it, Mr. Dry? I guess the proper way would be for you to take a vote. Who, there's one term that's... that's one uh, term one goes uh, to April 30th, 2016. And then they would need to reapply to continue so on. So there's the one term that's shorter and one One term. term that's shorter, yes. It goes just a little over a year, and the other is uh, almost two years. Who is there? Does anybody want to volunteer for the two year? Okay. We'll see, that works. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. That, that helps. <laughs> Thank you. There, uh, on the current library board, there will be two terms expiring April 30th of this year. 
and both of those applicant or both of those current board members are not eligible for reappointment because they've served two full terms. So that being said, those that were not selected tonight, we will have two openings coming up uh, August or April the 30th of this year. So we'll advertise for those uh, the end of March. And it might be a step in your or a, a mark in your favor to go ahead and start attending those meetings now. And when you reapply in a few months, you could let us know that you've been going to the meetings already. All right, then. Uh, Cindy, go ahead and let the record show that uh, Pete Wolverscheid was selected for the term to expire in 2016 mm -hmm. and Leslie Hills in 2017. That's correct. All right. Next item on the agenda, a resolution to issue electric utility system revenue bonds. Joe Norton, bond counsel from Gilmore and Bell, and Tom Calico, Calico, I think I'd know that by now, <laughs> financial advisor from Springstead will make comments. Mayor and commissioners, before they get started, I'd like to bring you up today a little bit on our negotiations with GRDA. In Is that mic on? Hello, can you hear me now? There you go. Okay. Uh, I'd like to bring you up to date on our negotiations with GRDA. In uh, November of this of last year, we received a rough draft contract from GRDA, which included uh, the uh, capacity payments for new generation and some other changes. Uh, we then uh, sent that to uh, uh, Duncan and Allen and John Coyle and his colleagues. Reviewed that. We had numerous conference calls to discuss those issues. And in, uh, we, we ended up with changes to that contract. We sent it to uh, GRDA in uh, late December. And we met last week. Uh, John Coyle and uh, our city staff met in Benita with GRDA staff. And we um, uh, discussed this contract in detail. We came up with a few changes. And we left it up to uh, GRDA to uh, include those changes in a new rough draft which I should receive tomorrow or early Thursday. And then we will review it again and go back next week on the 20th and try to finalize that contract. And then the plan would be to uh, uh, bring it to the commission on the um, 10th of February and it'll go to the GRDA board on the 11th of February. And that should, if that all works out, that would include a very important piece of this whole project to uh, be able to move on. Uh, we're working on a really tight schedule to try to uh, continue taking uh, advantage of uh, procurement with uh, the, the equipment with uh, Stillwater. And uh, we have a lot of good folks working on it. We have a lot of good help all over the, all over the country. And, uh, and uh, with having said that, um, I'll turn it over to Mr. Norton. Thanks, Gene. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Joe Norton with Gilmore and Bell, the city's bond council. As Gene indicated, he gave you an update on the project. Kansas law provides that you have the ability to issue revenue bonds payable from the electric utility revenue sources, uh, provided certain procedural steps are, are taken. Step one is the adoption of a resolution uh, by the governing body declaring an intent to undertake the project and to pay for that project with these revenue bonds. That a notice of that resolution is then published once in the official city newspaper and the citizens have an opportunity to file a protest petition against that project and financing. There's a 15 day time period in which 20% of the qualified voters can file that protest petition. If that petition is not filed or is insufficient, then the city has the ability to move forward with the project and the financing for that project. Before you tonight uh, is a draft resolution which we have prepared in consultation with Mr. Kreitz. Uh, that would do uh, basically four operative sections. Section one is you declare an intent to proceed uh, with the improvements to the system, uh, basically providing for an additional 56 megawatts of electric generation. Uh, the next section would declare an intent to issue utility system revenue bonds payable from the electric utility system revenues to finance that project and related cost of issuance and reserves. 
and section four then provides for that notice and protest opportunity uh, that we just discussed. I think also in your packet today was a proposed source and use of the funds that Mr. Calico's firm and others have put together. We can talk through that as to how we get to the numbers that are in the resolution. Do you have that before you, gentlemen? Or if you want to, I guess, okay. Basically, the source and use of funds, we anticipate that the issue of the bonds will be divided into a tax-exempt feature and a taxable feature. Uh, the energy that would be provided for, to GRDA for resale, some of which would be sold basically to the general public or other municipal entities, and that portion could be done on a tax-exempt interest rate basis. Others are sold to non-governmental entities or other members of the non-public, uh, and th that portion would have to be financed with uh, bonds, which are the interest on which is subject to federal taxation. The final allocation of that has not yet been determined, but basically is a pretty good estimate on this sheet before you. Uh, the initial capital cost of the project has been determined by your staff as $59,925,400. Since we are doing a not to exceed and since certain contract amounts are not yet finalized, it's been suggested that we add that $2.5 million project contingency to get to a total capital cost of $62,425,400,000. And that is the number that's included in Section 1 of the resolution before you. The anticipated not to exceed uh, principal out of the bonds is determined there at the bottom of that uh, chart. And that would include the financing of a debt service reserve fund, uh, cost of issuance, uh, marketing fees to underwriters, and interest during construction. One of the things is that we understand the project is, is that your revenue stream back from GRDA will commence once the project is complete and operational. In order to build the project, you have to borrow the money up front interest will accrue on those bonds during the time that the construction is undertaking. And so either you have to pay for that interest out of cash flow or you can borrow that as part of the bond issue, set it in a reserve and pay that periodic interest until the project is completed and revenues are, are sort forth. So the final decision on that has not yet been made but we want to provide for an allowance for that should you decide to take that option. And so those numbers add up to $71,810,000 and that is the number which is in section four, or excuse me, section three of the resolution and will appear in the notice uh, that will go in the paper uh, should you approve this resolution this evening. Uh, Mr. Calico is here to answer financial questions. I'd be happy to discuss anything related to the bond matters that you may have before you consider the resolution. What was the uh, rationalization or the justification for the percentage split between tax exempt and taxable? Right now it's on a 75-25 just based on preliminary information. Uh, that was kind of based on the preliminary analysis of what was going on in the Stillwater transaction. Uh, our firm's tax lawyers, the underwriters tax lawyers are having a meeting Thursday morning to go through and try to do the final uh, analysis on that number. Uh, we'll need to get that confirmed with the GRDA folks. We just haven't had that opportunity yet because until the contract is executed, we won't be able to determine what that amount is. So. It could be, you know, five or ten percent one way or the other. Okay, and the interest you mentioned, uh, five point five eight percent. What's what's the length of the what's the construction time? How long would we anticipate? Uh, we hope to have uh, commercial operation by the schedule is October twenty sixteen. And right now that's still attainable, but it's, but it's really aggressive up front what we're doing right now. That's that's really critical in getting this done so we can meet that schedule. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I don't want you to be confused at five point five eight percent. That's the percentage of the construction interest as the total principal amount of the bonds. That's not the estimate of what the interest would be on the bonds. Tom can speak to that better than I can. But that's All just, right. in other words, the, the four million is 5.58 percent of 71,810. Yeah, because yeah. that interest does. I mean, that is four million. Exactly. Right. So you have to fund that on a periodic basis during the construction period from system revenues, or you could legally borrow that and make those payments during construction and make that part of the permanent financing and pay for it over the term of the bond issue. Paul, at what point would we make that decision? That's a, probably a Tom question. Well, I think, I, I'll, let me try that. Basically, um, 
you know, we're anticipating that there may actually be two components of the financing. The one may be a shorter term financing to make the initial deposit and provide for the upfront consultant fees. And then when better project costs are known in a few months from now, do the permanent financing. When we get ready to do the permanent financing, that decision will have to be made so that we okay. know how many bonds that are issued. If you adopt the resolution as present form, we know the maximum amount would be 71810, but you could issue less depending on final project cost, a decision on the capitalized interest, things like that that could be determined before we go to market for the permanent financing. And we are, to reiterate, we are looking at a, at a bond repayment over how many years? Until 2042. Did we look at trying to pay it off quicker to achieve a, a savings? I, I think I'll try to respond to that. I mean, I think, I think anything is in play before you structure the financing. I think some of the discussions that have been had early on is that you know, or once the contract is signed, you know what the cash flow will be coming back from GRDA. Yeah. And that will be over this longer period of time. If you, you know, match that up, then you basically have dollar, dollars coming in and dollars going out to pay debt service. If you try to pay the debt service on the bonds off earlier, that means you'll be accelerating those payments, and the money coming from GRDA may not be sufficient to cover the payment. To cover that, so that would mm -hmm. have to come from other operating funds. It's possible, but I think the preliminary analysis is let's match it up dollar for dollar so it's not going to adversely affect your other operations. Again, that's a matter of discussion that could be determined before we go to permanent financing. But they could be callable at some point in the future. Yes, we, have, we would anticipate there would be a call feature. Okay. All right. And again, that's all subject to negotiation with the buyers of the bonds. How soon? Obviously, it's better for the city to have it earlier. The bondholders would like it later, and that's part of the negotiation to get to a midpoint. All right. So the. Uh, The resolution then, if adopted, just sets a, sets a not to exceed amount, but does not uh, push that train out of the station yet. Uh, my 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 concern is is <coughs> entirely may not happen. I've had some conversations with James, and apparently for the uh, negotiations with GRDA went uh, much better than expected. And uh, we w actually wound up getting more than we were actually anticipating out of the deal. But it still has to go to before their board. And if something blew up in our face during that meeting, uh, we want to be able to make sure we can't, we, we don't, we're not pre-committed to, uh, to this bond financing. Exactly. You're getting authorization to move forward should you desire to do that at a time in the future. Okay. So hearkening back to some of my old budget days, it's uh, authorization and appropriations. Exactly. All right. We're talking about authorization today. You'll make the decision on how much to borrow and what the terms are later in the process. All right. And that, you know, nothing will come back to you in the form of a borrowing authorization, actual issue debt, until such time as the GRDA contract is signed, sealed, delivered, and also your agreement with the provider of the um, generation is in the same boat. That may well happen on February 10th and 11th, and if so, then we'll proceed expeditiously to put the financing together for your consideration. Okay. Right. Questions? Plus, you didn't want to drive all the way down from where you're from and not get up and say something, right? <laughs> Move to approve resolution number R-15-01 for adoption. Thank you for being here tonight. Second. Who's second? Me. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Edwards and seconded by Commissioner Martin to approve resolution number R-15-01 for adoption. 
Commissioner Williams. I have a question before I vote. None of these bonds or anything will proceed until after this contract is signed by GRDA. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. Okay, that yes. Is correct. Commissioner Williams. Yes. Aye. Commissioner Kassler. Aye. Commissioner Edwards. Aye. Mayor Faulkner. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Thank you very All much. Right. We'll probably get to see you again. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, resolution number R-15-02, a resolution to execute mm -hmm. two change orders for the airport drainage improvement project. Public Works Director Chuck Shively will make comments. Mayor and Commissioners, um, the recently completed airport drainage improvement project was bid based on unit prices bid times the estimated quantities to be completed. These two quantity change orders adjust the final contract price to reflect the actual quantities completed. The two change orders combined result in an increase in the final cost of $4,151.70. Since this project is funded 90% by FAA, the actual increased cost to the city is $415.17. I recommend that the City Commission authorize execution of change order number one and change order number two to the FAA Airport Drainage Improvement Project construction contract with Emory Sapp and Sons Incorporated. Any questions? I move to approve resolution number R-15-02 for adoption. Second. Motion was made by Mayor Faulkner and seconded by Commissioner Edwards to approve resolution number R-15-02 for adoption. Commissioner Edwards. Aye. Mayor Faulkner. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Kassler. Aye. And thank you for staying at the podium, Chuck. If you would, please, uh, as sort of a short to midterm project, like to know uh, what is the runway weight bearing capacity of our runway out at the airport okay. what types and sizes of various aircraft will that support and what would it take and alibi it might run into the millions of dollars but what would it take to be able to uh, land larger commercial uh, transport heavier aircraft at the run on on that runway just as a just as a piece of information, uh, I'd like to have that as part of our uh, economic development package uh, perspective. Industries coming into the park out there, they may want to know what what's the capacity to handle uh, air traffic out there. And Thomas has a lot of that information that he was going to have when he comes up for the other airport item on the agenda. Oh, okay. Look, okay. Currently, uh, our, uh, we have the cross one runway and the main runway. Our main runway has a single weight uh, bearing capacity of uh, 20,000 pounds with uh, a dual weight or dual tire uh, capacity of 25. Um, uh, we can now, this, is this main landing gear? Yes. Okay, so for a single, single wheel on each main landing gear, it's 20,000, two wheels, 25,000. Yes. Okay. And then the uh, type of aircraft, uh, I think we fly in, there's a, I think John Deere has a, a golf train, they come in all the time. Uh, I think our current uh, critical aircraft is a Cessna Citation 10. As far as what it would take to uh, reach our ultimate, which is 30,000 uh, single, and uh, I believe it's 45 uh, dual, uh, it, you're looking at about four to five inches of asphalt over the whole length of the runway, which is a little over a mile. Um, I don't have an actual number on that. Um, if you want an actual number, I can tell you get it, but that's what it's looking at. Um, and even then, that's you're still not going to be able to land really big cargo carriers. Um, if you're wanting to land cargo carriers, you're going to look at at least a thousand foot extension to the runway. Uh, and probably widening it as well. Which means you're going to be in the runway line 
So that's probably an impractical project then. I believe the 1735, the main runway, was originally 150 and they reduced it to 100, right? Yes, I believe so. That's what I thought. And then uh, the 422 is 75. Okay, thank you. <coughs> All right, next on the agenda, resolution number R-15-03, a resolution to execute a service agreement with Criswell Engineering for the electric utility. Electric Utility Director Gene Ratzel will make comments. Mayor, Commissioners. Oh. Um, the electric utility owns and operates six electric substations and four electric generating units to provide reliable economic electric service to our residents, businesses, and visitors, to provide the most reliable system possible and to meet federally mandated NERC requirements, the electric utility must perform certain testing on high voltage electric apparatus on a scheduled basis. Staff issued a public request for proposals in 2014, receiving quotes from three firms to provide these services. Based on qualifications and cost, Criswell Engineering was selected. Criswell Engineering did not increase their rates above the 2014 rates for fiscal year 2015. Staff will again seek in 2017 through a public request for proposals a competitive cost for these services. Staff recommends that the mayor be authorized to enter into a service agreement for electrical engineering substation maintenance testing and support services with Criswell Engineering for the amount not to exceed $150,000 for 2015. Any questions? When we say support services, what does that mean? Because uh, we've, we've discussed this, and we've talked about this before. Uh, we're looking at a contract not to exceed 150,000. Uh, is there anyone on the, uh, in the electric department that could perform these services at this time? We, we have some availability to do that, yes but it's usually in, in uh, helping Criswell Engineering, or when he's not here, we can do you know, certain things. But uh, many times we actually are, are on the phone with him when we, when we get things that are too complicated for our folks to do, and he usually walks us through it and helps us to uh, do whatever we need to do. All right, what, what's involved in maintenance? Maintenance, we, uh, they, uh, uh, our relays all have to go through testing, uh, some are every two years, some every three years, and uh, we go through every substation and have a, we have a plan, a three-year plan, that uh, we go through and we test all relays. We test breakers, uh, transformers. Um, we test uh, breakers and transformers at the power plant, um, pretty much everything in all our substations and our power plant. Is it possible for the future to get somebody on staff that could do this? Probably not because I'll tell you why because this is very specialized. Uh, this is this individual has been doing this for decades and I remember a couple of years ago GRDA tried to get somebody to do this and they advertised and they finally got a person and they were paying him something like uh, I think a hundred thousand dollars and he he didn't he uh, changed his mind went somewhere else it's, they're, they're just not available. They're very specialized. And some of these other companies that bid uh, last year, they have people that, um, uh, several people in their organization, and you probably would never get the same person. You know, you, and um, one thing about Chris Well, he, he knows our equipment. Um, he's had this price since 2011. He's not changed his prices since 2011. Or maybe even earlier, but I, I have it from 2011 to, to now. And uh, this was a budgeted item, yes. is that correct? Yes. All right. Any other questions? Okay. <coughs> Move to approve ordinance number 15-03. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Williams and seconded by Commissioner Martin to approve resolution number R-15-03 for adoption. Commissioner Kassler. 
Aye. Mayor Faulkner. Aye. Commissioner Edwards. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is resolution number R-15-04, a resolution to execute a services contract with Roger Gossard for Public Defender Services. City Attorney Paul Kreitz will make comments. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioners, uh, anytime the city wants to impose a jail sentence to offenders in municipal court, we are required, they are required to either have an attorney or waive their right to an attorney. If they can't afford an attorney, an attorney is appointed to represent them. Our indigent defender has been Jeff Gossard for the last 10 or 12 years. Uh, he had, uh, was sworn in yesterday to take the bench, and so we are without a public defender at the present time. W we started thinking about who would be a suitable replacement for Jeff, and uh, actually Chief Celeste suggested former Judge Gossard, now Roger, um, to serve in that capacity. He's a local attorney, obviously years of experience. We think he'd do a good job as a public defender. Um, we, uh, I talked to Mr. Gossard about serving. Uh, he was agreeable. He did request uh, that we consider paying him $800 per month. We've been paying Jeff $700 per month for the last however long we've had him in that capacity. I think Mr. Gossard's thinking was that there would be a reduction in the number of cases that would uh, pose conflicts, in which case we'd have to appoint a, another attorney and incur that additional expense. Uh, when, in, when anyone is appointed an attorney and, and is convicted, the judge always imposes some attorney fees. So we do recoup some of those monies from, um, from people who are sentenced. Um, that, that's really all I have to propose tonight or to say. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Were there any other applicants or any other attorneys approached? There. Uh, there were no other applicants. We didn't really put it out for proposals or, or bid per se because of the specialized nature of the service. Um, and frankly, there are no other local attorneys uh, that would be able to serve in this capacity. I did, I did talk to a couple, um, but there aren't very many that would be interested in this kind of work, fr quite frankly. I did talk to one out of city firm um, and it came, became very clear very quickly that they were going to want extra compensation for the travel time and mileage, et cetera. So I think your savings is here. And it's comparable, I think, with what the county pays for ind indigent representation at the county level. Um, so it, it'd be my recommendation that you go ahead and approve this. If, you know, I guess you do have the option of going out for proposals if you wanted to do so, but. Move to approve resolution number R-15-04 for adoption at $800 a month. Second. Second. You got it. <laughs> Motion was made by Commissioner Edwards and seconded by Commissioner Kassler to approve resolution number R-15-04 for adoption. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Edwards. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Mayor Faulkner. Aye. Commissioner Kassler. Aye. And passed, and congratulations. Uh, almost said <laughs> your honor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> See you. All right. And uh, I'm sure you'll do a good job. All right, next is resolution number R-15-05, a resolution to purchase real property located at the industrial park. And City Attorney Paul Kreitz will make comments. Commissioners, this uh, is a matter we've discussed in executive session a couple of times. If we're going to do this new generation, we need to find a site to build uh, the facility. And this is, as I said in my staff report, ideally uh, located for this particular project. If we uh, move it to another location farther away from the substation at the industrial park, it's my understanding that the costs would go up exponentially. 
So there's some savings to be had by purchasing this location. The county's appraised value of this property is $298,000. The seller initially asked uh, $500,000 for the property. We negotiated to a purchase price of $325,000. Closing is to occur on March 27th, subject to a couple of things. Uh, one is environmental um, investigations. Um, two is that the new generation goes forward. If, if the property is not suited to the city's use uh, because of environmental concerns or if the decision is made to stop the um, new generation uh, project, then we can back out of this contract without cost. Uh, we make a $3,000 earnest money deposit and that would be refunded to us. It does also contain a provision that if we get to March 27th and haven't made a, a firm decision about new generation, we can extend the contract, the closing date, to sometime in June. Uh, but in that case, we would forfeit the $3,000 earnest money deposit. All right. Can you Questions? just briefly explain why this issue or issues like this are discussed in executive session? Well, yes. Because we, we uh, have one former commission. Uh, one former commissioner who sends out emails and he pretends to not understand the importance of this, but I, I think for the, the benefit of the people in attendance and watching at home on television, it would be it would behoove us all to be enlightened as to why we discuss these things in executive session. Yeah. As you all know, the Kansas Open Meetings Act contains some exceptions, and one of those exceptions is discussions regarding the acquisition of real estate. And the uh, reason for that, of course, is uh, you know you don't want to publicly engage in those discussions and uh, show your hand about what you're willing to pay for a piece of property and that you need a piece of property. Those negotiations need to have to happen, kind of um, uh, in private. In private. In private. Yes. To in just other to words, avoid. If it was in open session, the city would lose all negotiating power. Absolutely. Completely. Absolutely. Which would drive the price up. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. Move to approve resolution number R-15-05 for adoption. No second. <coughs> Motion was made by Commissioner Edwards and seconded by Mayor Faulkner to approve resolution number R-15-05 for adoption. Commissioner Edwards. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Kessler. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Mayor Faulkner. Aye. And next on the agenda, discussion on the 2016 through 2019 airport capital improvement projects submittal. Engineering Tech Thomas Osborne will make comments. Thomas. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, each year we have to submit to the FAA our airport capital improvement program. Uh, uh, each year we are actually awarded 150,000 in entitlement funds. Um, we can bank those funds for up to four years to get a, up to a $600,000 project at 10 cents on the dollar. Um, and basically what, what I'm coming before you for is uh, that middle is due in, I believe, the 12th of February. So it's coming up and I just want to get the order in so that we can get the proper data sheets created so we can uh, finalize the submittal and get it submitted to the FAA on time. Um, in discussion with uh, Chuck and Jim, uh, we, uh, we're looking at our previous submittals, uh, and we, just, we looked at, uh, we decided that it was, we were trying to put a lot of new stuff out at the airport and really weren't taking care of what we had already. So we, we've rearranged this order to where it's, we're, we're more focused on what's out there, getting it maintained, keeping it in good condition. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Looks good to me. I, I was just curious down there on the uh, 2022, it's got concrete apron removal. Uh, would that be? That is. Uh, um, is that new concrete? No, no that concrete. Is the old or? concrete that's been out there for years. There's grass and weeds and some other brush that's growing up through it. Uh, we, we brush hog it and it just causes a, a mess of a lot of things trying to keep the uh, taxiways and runways clear. For Okay. Any questions on the list? Mr. Williams? Nope. All right.
right then. All right. Thank you very much, Thomas. Right. Thank you. And uh, since our city manager is not with us, but he's uh, in training at this time, uh, I don't think there's a report unless anyone has carried anything in on his behalf. We can just combine the comments from uh, All right. the Move staff on. with that. Comments um, from number nine then on the agenda, comments from commissioners and staff. Well, will let staff go first. I do have uh, two or three things uh, to say. Uh, we released a trout today in uh, LeClaire Park, so for all the trout fishermen out there, uh, they want to get out and uh, get some of these uh, new trout. The filing deadline uh, for local elections is Tuesday, January the 27th at noon, and city commission files in the city clerk's office, and those that are filing for 445 or CCC would file in the county clerk's office in Independence. The applications uh, for, uh, or it's not an application so much, it's the filing documents are available on the city's website. <coughs> we do have two openings uh, on the planning commission and we'll take applications through uh, next week and then plan to bring that to you on January the 27th. Also at the January 27th meeting, there will be a work session at five o'clock and that will be with the municipal facilities advisory renovation panel what those are. and that that's at five and then the regular meeting will be at 6 30 and i'll send out a reminder that's all that i have all right other staff going once going twice any other staff members all right. Do I qualify for staff? Not yet. No, sir. I got a question about the, uh, the meeting at 5 o'clock. I didn't know when to ask it. And I thought everybody would want to know. It, that'll be your opportunity to make your presentation to the commission. No, I'm talking about, you just mentioned the 5 o'clock panel meeting, the 27th? Yes. That's the work session. I, I've got a question. All right, what's your question? Okay, the question is where are we going to meet? It will be right here, here at the Senior yeah. Citizen Center. And, and did you get, Sandy, did you get, uh, uh, there's been a little bit of confusion on the, the drawings. Are they bringing all that stuff with them? The work session, uh, Jim, on the 27th will just be between the panel and the commission. Okay. Hey, Jim, you got I'll talk more to you. you. Might want to come up here. Yeah. You got There is a meeting with the panel, right? And that's Thursday, okay. At can one o'clock. Have we asked? I know I, my, my somebody the, sent out a, an email for me today, and I was out of town. I just got back in town. Blah blah blah. But are we going to be able to get the drawings and any of the reports from the engineers? It's my understanding that they will bring those to okay. the meeting. Okay, and we're going to meet here. No, that meeting will be at 102 West 7th at the City Hall. Okay, I would like to be able to meet here if we can so we can look through the drawings at a table, if we can. I don't know, Jim, if this building would be available, but okay. the everything was sent out for that meeting uh, at 1 o'clock, and it will be in the commission room, Okay. and so the credenza and the table is and still And we could there. do it there. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, commissioners, questions or comments? Any issues, any topic? I'd like to say something. <laughs> I don't recall specifically in the uh, appropriation. I guess I can look it up. The amount of money that we spent, looks like we paid Amazon $492.74. I understand that we're up here, oh, we're gonna beat up Amazon, you know, we, they're leaving town or whatever, so we're all gonna pile on the bandwagon and, and uh, not spend our money there or whatever. But if that's the cheapest place to buy a specific item and you can't purchase it in the city of Coffeyville, then I think the uh, 
saving the taxpayers money far outweighs the $492 that we're going to break them of by not spending it with them. Well, that, I, think, that, I think that, let me finish, I think that the amount of money that we're going to save taxpayers is going to far outweigh and should be brought into the decision making process versus the we're going to jump on the bandwagon and beat them up. I think it needs to be a, we have a procurement policy. They need to follow the procurement policy as we pass the ordinance to, to have them do. Whether that's, if they're the cheapest place, then they need to follow the ordinance and the procurement policy. I agree. I believe I did say to the maximum extent possible. All right. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. All right, then, uh, next item, if required, uh, executive session. Is there anyone that uh, requires an executive session? I'd like to have one to uh, or discuss contracts. Ten minutes. What would that be? Contracts. Contract? What? Uh, real estate contract. The acquisition of real uh, estate? The you know what? I don't. I don't care. We can discuss it right here. Our contract that we have on the house on Fourth Street. When is it? When is it due? And I think oh. that it probably ought to be discussed in there. But you're. I mean, I don't know. You're the attorney. Should we discuss it in there or not? Um, I don't think we know what you're talking about. You want an update on? Exactly. On that deal. Yeah. That probably should be talked. Yeah, that's uh, a matter of. I would agree with Mr. Wade on that. Personnel. All right. Then real estate, we'll non-elected personnel, kind of. Well, it's not <laughs> a, a real estate deal. Or if you want me to update you individually, I'll be happy to do that. That might be an appropriate yeah. way to handle that. Does anybody else want an update on that? I'd like to know what's going I'd like on. To, I'd like to know what's going on. We'll probably take care of it in 10 minutes. All right, then, uh, we will adjourn for executive session. Uh, Let's call it an attorney-client consultation. Matter for purposes of attorney-client consultation. Is there uh, a second, that Commissioner second. Williams? And that will be 10 minutes to include a five-minute break to return on or about 745. Motion was made by Commissioner Williams and seconded by Commissioner Martin to adjourn to executive session for the discussion of attorney-client uh, relationship to reconvene on or before 745, and that will include a five-minute break. All in favor? Aye. And agenda, there would be no further actions upon reconvening.